Being in India, we quite well understand the art of matchmaking. Now, while I have my reservations about matchmaking when it comes to marriage, I am an ardent advocate of matchmaking when it comes to wine and food. So this segment will be the Shadi.com equivalent of the culinary world as we explore the fine art of wine and food pairing. Matchmaking can indeed be a rather touchy subject. While sometimes there are certain rules, certain formulas that work well, it's also a highly subjective endeavor. And sometimes it's simply just a magical chemistry that makes two elements work well together. The same goes for wine and food. And today I was at Rhapsody in the Courtyard Marriott to experience a concept called Wine Flights. Let me take you back a little uh, into the history of light wines. Uh, it's non-existent in India, I think, almost. But around the world, if you travel around a little, you'll see these flight wines do exist for a long time. This basically works uh, as flight wines because if you want to give a range of tastes to people who come to you, instead of just a glass of wine, there are some people who just uh, drink wine to taste wines and experience it through grapes and regions and because a lot of new world have come up with wines now. So if you're not a great wine drinker or if you can't drink a lot of wines, it actually does help you to adjust because we give, as you understand that we have given you small, small samples, basically two ounces of wine. So you can start with the starter two ounces and then you go to the pre-main course two ounces, go with the main course and dessert. So we have taken that history to a Rhapsody and change it a little and just made it like uh, either you pair it with your starter, pre main course, main course, and dessert, or you can have uh, the flight wine by itself. Wine flights, also called tasting flights, are tastings involving multiple wines. They can involve anywhere from three to four wines to upwards of 50 wines. And today I had a flight of wines before me that had been paired with each one of my Italian themed courses. Today's set menu, if you say as an antipasti platter, one as I have said already, I've given a classic example to you. I never followed with a basa, which you know basically if the the fair idea, if, it, if you no need to go about interior also, if it's a fair idea, if it is a red meat, we always pair with a red wine. If it's a white meat like a fish and all it's light, so we pair it with a white wine. And uh, we always finish with the sparkling wines. Well, to begin our delicious expedition, we have an antipasti platter with all sorts of delights. In the corner over here, I have the bruschetta on a bed of pesto with vegetables topped off with mascarpone cheese and a little basil leaf for garnish. Um, over here, I have the pan-seared foie gras uh, with scallops, a hint of tomato jam on a bed of pumpkin with caramelized onions in the corner. La la la. And finally, the pear and pine nut salad. Now this has been paired with my very first wine, the Danzante Pinot Grigio. Now Pinot Grigio gets its name from the grayish kind of color of the grape, but the wine itself is a beautiful straw yellow color with little golden highlights. It smells mm, like tropical fruits on a beach on a sunny, sunny day, and it tastes, well, we'll see. My Pinot Grigio had a summery, crisp, citrusy taste to it, which offset the fatty heaviness of the foie gras and the sweet of the caramelized onions and pumpkin mash. At the same time, the wine found a complimentary soulmate in the fresh, light pear and pine nut salad. Yes, indeed, we were off to a good start. Well, my next dish is the pan-seared basa fish, served with a side of creamy spinach. Mm. And the fish is as creamy textured as the spinach it's been served with. It also comes with a side of grilled vegetables. There's a little bit of cauliflower, some red peppers, some zucchini and baby corn. Now this dish has been paired with the Verdicchio Clasco. The Verdicchio grape is a grape that's indigenous to Italy. The wine is a beautiful yellow, sort of straw yellow color with just hints of green. Mm, it's 
got a very citrusy and fruity scent. Ooh. And uh, we're gonna see now how well it pairs with the pan-seared basa fish. Now this wine is said to have a sort of bitter almond quality to it. For me, I detected a sharp tartness and the extremely mild flavor of my basa fish allowed the wine to radiate and shine in the spotlight. So this pairing worked to highlight the wine with its fruity, flowery aromas and downplayed the fish to a degree. And the slight tartness of the wine contrasted the buttery, rich texture of the fish in a most pleasant way. Well, we finally arrived at the main course, so exciting. We have the roast chicken that's been stuffed with parmesan and bread. On the side, um, a side of risotto with rosemary, a hint of rosemary, and also mascarpone cheese, and also the zucchini and potato parmigiana. Now comes the inevitable task of finding the perfect match for this chicken. Paired with my chicken was the Bel Cole Red. Bel Cole, meaning beautiful hill, is a small winery in Little Verduno in Italy. The Bel Cole Rosso, or Red, is a blend of the renowned Sangiovese grape, Italy's main red wine grape originating in Tuscany, and also the Montepulciano grape, another Italian red wine grape variety. The wine was slightly spicy, rather acidic, and for me, it overwhelmed the lightly seasoned chicken. A lighter, fruitier red would have worked better. Well, for Venetians, Prosecco is the ideal aperitivo or ombretta, which is like a pick-me-up. And when I was in Venice in the summer, I would walk by the local wine bars early in the morning to find happy Venetians drinking Prosecco for breakfast or in the middle of the afternoon in between work. Now, today we are pairing up a Tiamo Prosecco with the berry tiramisu. With its bitter aftertaste and crisp fruitiness, a sparkly glass of Prosecco is a great way to end a heavy meal. The Prosecco grape is grown primarily in the Veneto region of Italy. The sparkle cuts swiftly through the heavy, creamy tiramisu rather well, though I did find it tough to get through such a rich dessert after my rich meal. Well, I suppose matchmaking isn't so bad after all, at least not when it comes to wine and food. Now, I do hope you've learned a thing or two of wine and food pairing. Speaking of matchmaking, for your chance to have dinner with myself or one of the other lovely Feeding Frenzy anchors, all you have to do is answer us one little question. So maybe I'll see you soon. What was margarine called when it was first marketed in England? A. Marmite B. Low-fat cream or C. Butterine. Send your answers in to feedback at ndtv-hindu.com.